Yo-ho! Welcome to Gutter Trash. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name's Eric. I'm Jason. This is the 350th episode. Is it really? Yes, it is. I did not realize that. Yeah. Well, happy anniversary, honey. <laughs> Thanks, baby. <laughs> Some might ask how we keep it so fresh. <laughs> uh, we occasionally uh, take a year off when something terrible happens to one of us. That's true. We do. <laughs> that always helps. Yeah, yeah. If you need a breather, take a year off. <laughs> we recommend it. Yep. That goes uh, for anything. Work, marriages. Yep, yep. Uh, diets. Sure. Um, n- nose hair trimming. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is yep. that you just can't stand anymore. <laughs> Take a year off. Uh, so despite the last tragedy in our lives of losing a Joji. Oh yeah, he's gone. Uh, but not forgotten. But not, definitely not forgotten. Uh, we, we decided that let's, let's go ahead and, and keep going with this for now. You know, I I did mention that to somebody the other day because pre comic book day was Saturday. Yeah. And uh I saw all of our like regular like you know, like you know, some some people you don't see very often or like you know, you or or you do or whatever. But right, yeah. but you always see a Joe G on pre comic book day. Right. But I didn't this year. I think yeah. it's the first time in like probably the history of free comic book days. Sure. Well no, that's not true. The history of free comic book days where I've been in Dayton, Ohio at okay, least. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because some no. sometimes I would Abscond to the land of the north. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember one time. Well, Joe G was there with you, though. Not, I, not every time. Yeah, but once. Oh yeah, once. once yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true. Like yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I didn't see him this year. I thought about him though. I, I thought about too. thought about texting him, but we were way too busy. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't text him at all uh, on Saturday anyway. Uh, but yeah, he he was out. Gallivanting around with with Seattle comic book stores. <laughs> I, what do they possibly have that Dayton, Ohio doesn't have in the way of culture? <laughs> Nothing, right? You got rain and heroin. Not necessarily in that order. Hey, we've got both of those too. That's true. We do. We probably deliver a lot of that heroin. It probably comes through here. Oh yeah, from you know the. The drug trade trafficking that we excel in. Uh, John Patterson's rolling over in his grave. Like, all of the factory work from Dayton is gone, and it's just a big drug town now. Yeah. Don't come here, people. If you can hear this message, stay <laughs> away. It's it's over. All that's left is drugs. See, we're mostly sad because Joe got out. Yeah, he escaped. <laughs> We're not sad that he's gone. We're sad that he didn't take us with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, good for him. He's better off. Yes. <laughs> so 350, wow. 350. Wow. We, we've been at this a while. So we're a fourth of the way there? Didn't we originally say 1,400 episodes? Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we've done better than Cerebus. <laughs> True. Wow. Well, we've only become slightly misogynistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not full bore. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we don't. We don't even make you sign a petition to listen. You can just do it. <laughs> well, it's not like he was making you sign a petition to read. Oh, well, that's well. Don't give him any ideas, though. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's around the corner. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Uh, his, uh, his current output is, uh, enough to make people decide not to read Cerebus. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've read everything the man has published since I was 14 years old, other than the last four comics he's done, or, or three comics, <laughs> because I just have zero interest. Cerebus and Hell? Cerebus and Hell, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's mildly amusing if I was, like... You know, waiting on a doctor's appointment or something, I would, I would probably pick it up and read it. Sure. As opposed to like good housekeeping. Right. But other than that, I can't imagine sitting down and purposefully reading that book. I flipped through the first issue of it and, uh, it was like the same panel over and over again of sure. Cerebus. Yeah. With like backgrounds from Dante's Inferno. Yep. Yep. Dialogue 
I guess. I mean, and, you know, and part of that is I I get the fact that he can't draw. Right. Like he hurt his hand. It's like, you know, it's it's not like he, you know, slammed it on a van door. It's it's like a carpal tunnel kind yeah. of thing or whatever. Um, I get it, but you know what? There's a lot of artists, and he's worked with artists in the past. Right. He could just say, "Hey, I've got this idea for a story. And yeah, right. Can you draw it for me?" Yeah. You know, and I'm sure he's still got enough clout and hasn't burned oh, so yeah. many bridges that people would say yes. I would have drawn it for free. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, not that my drawings would be probably like the first place he would look, but I'm just saying, like, there's yeah, plenty can, of yeah, plenty yeah, of people yeah. out there. Yeah. So I'm sure Jeff Smith. No, Jeff. I think he burnt that bridge. Uh, I think he like punched Jeff Smith's wife in the eye or something. I don't. I don't know. They don't get along anymore because of how could he? She's a void. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I love Dave Sims' artwork. Yeah. There's that. I love Gerhard's artwork. Oh, he's great too. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, they are. That's another bridge he's burnt, I believe, right? What is it? That's oh, another I, bridge I he's burnt. I, I, I think they, I think they're okay. Really? Right. Yeah, I think they just are not don't work together anymore. Right. But, right. yeah. So now that we've talked about uh, some of the darker parts of comic books, mm-hmm. maybe we should explore that further. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Because I did not mention that we read a book. Oh, yeah, we did. We and read, we, uh, we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so uh, if you listened to the last episode, uh, you'll know that uh, Joe G picked a book for us to read. Oh, that's right. And uh, I did add like uh, an addendum to, to the end of that episode. So, so hopefully the reader is, or the listener is prepared uh, that, that uh, we did not get a chance to read Roughneck. No. Uh, I, I sold the copy we were going to read. Yeah. Because that lady really wanted it. That's fair. Yeah. We'll get to it eventually, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to go with uh, what my original pick was going to be before uh, we, we let Joe pick. And that is The Comic Book History of Comics mm-hmm. by uh, Fred Van Lent. Van Lenty? I think it's Lent. Okay. And Ryan Dunleavy. Yeah. Who uh, I may have uh, accidentally called Ryan Brown in the uh, in my little addendum to last episode. Oh yeah, yeah. who's Ryan Brown? Uh, he uh, I think he's the artist on uh, uh, Curse Words and. Uh, oh okay. I, I think he actually does work with uh, uh, Fred Van Lent on uh, Slapstick. Oh okay. I think they co-write it. Maybe that's what. Yeah. Uh, what you, yeah okay. Huh. Again, don't take my word on that. I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the comic book history of comics. Yeah. Uh, which is actually currently being uh, re-released in yeah. color. Yeah, uh, by IDW? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. Or IDW is, published this one. Okay. Because yeah. isn't there a version that's not by IDW? Like an old... I think... Like, I think it was originally single issues. It was single issues, black and white, that, uh, I think, yeah, they, they're self-published or mm-hmm. put out through another company. And IDW has the collection here, which is what we read. Right. Uh, but then they're redoing it, serializing it as a single, single issues. issues. In, in color. In color, yeah. And I think the color version of the trade is actually in the new previews. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, uh, I'm guessing this, this is gonna be, uh, kind of one of those perennial type of books. Yeah. Like, uh, Understanding Comics or, uh, Watchmen. Yeah, I, it's, it's weird though, because this book kinda supposedly, you know, takes the history of comics from its inception to, to the present moment. Right. So I wonder if every few years they're gonna have uh, to upgrade it. Uh, yeah. Update it. As long as yeah, I these two guys are alive. The new version, the color version has, like, new material in it. Right. right. Maybe. Maybe it's possible. Because cause this ends roughly around 2012. Yeah, something, about five something years like back. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, some stuff has changed between then and now, but, but not yeah, so. Yeah, right. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so so this is, is the history of comic books yeah. in comic book form. Which is awesome. It is super awesome, yeah. 
And, uh, you know, just, just one bit of warning for anybody that may be interested in this. It's wordy. It's very wordy. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's not, I never felt bogged down no, at all. No, not at all. Yeah, not but, at all. Like, I, 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 mean, I still wound up reading through it pretty quickly <laughs> because it was captivating. It, it is captivating, but I love how it's kind of, it's not broken up into chapters, but every few pages there's like a new, um, theme. Yeah, subject. right. Yeah, a new subject or whatever. And there's usually like a, not a splash page, but like a title bar for that, the new, the new, you know, whatever they're discussing. And, and I did like find it easier to read it in smaller chunks because there is so much information and so many names oh, and dates. Yeah. Like it was, it was almost, Textbooky. Yeah, I mean, it was almost too much information to yeah. like to like just plow right through it because you, you had to like I had to take you know smaller chunks and process it before I started a new one. Same. Uh, and honestly, like I felt very similar reading this as I felt when we read uh, Hip Hop Family Tree. Yeah, like, yeah. Like there's there is a lot happening. Oh yeah. And, and I think this one is a little more streamlined than yeah. that because. You know, like there were so many names thrown out right. in uh, hip hop that uh, like I could never keep it straight. And I felt I had an easier time going through it with this. Yeah, uh, I think what helps is they definitely keep sort of the not not like there's a cast of characters or anything, but but they definitely keep the focus on on a, a handful. Of people. Yeah, right. And, uh. You got a lot of Walt Disney and a lot of Jack Kirby. Yeah, yeah. Definitely the two most recurring, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and of course, uh, like, uh, William Gaines. Uh, oh, yeah. Andrew Chunk. Yeah. Right here. Uh. But, uh, yeah, so, so this basically kind of even goes a little bit back before what we think of as the start of comics right. to sort yeah. of say, you know, there were some precursors here and there. Like, uh, Lynn Ward is woodcuts yeah, and, yeah. and I don't know how to pronounce Rudolf Tolfer's name, yeah, yeah. but whatever. Well, that's Ru- good enough. Yeah, 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 sure. But yeah, it has all, all we that don't know history. how to pronounce Fred Van Lett's name. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. We may even be pronouncing Ryan Dunleavy wrong. <laughs> You've actually been pronouncing my name wrong for 350 episodes. It's, oh, it's just soon. <laughs> yeah. Just like the, uh, just like the hair care products you find at the grocery store. That's fine. You know, I, now that you're bringing it up, it's Eric. Eric? Eric. Oh, I like that yeah. so much better. I, you are a foreigner. It's that true. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense you'd have a dumb name. <laughs> um, I love how, this book does not shy away from showing all the pimples on the all the creators from the history of comics. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some pretty shady people that made this industry. Oh what, yeah, what it is? Absolutely, and it shows all of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This. Uh, so I will say this: like in the middle of reading this, especially when I got to sort of the the because it is relatively chronological. Yeah. Like, Mostly, around, yeah. There's a few things where it kind of like, like hops back into World War Two or whatever, right. but it's like he'll he'll be talking about sort of like the general history of comics, and then he'll get to like a certain era, and then like the next thing he'll jump back like another ten, fifteen years to touch on something that happened in that time frame that relates to the next that era. Just needed its own, right? You know, section. Yeah. So it does jump around a little bit. For the most part, it is. I mean, from the the early 1900s to 2012-ish or so. Yeah. Uh, so when he hits around the part where it's, uh, you know, the, the start of Marvel, uh, it really made me want to listen to the audiobook of the uh, Marvel, the Untold Story. Yeah, me too, actually. Totally. And, like, you know, I sit in an office all day where I do my best to not talk to anybody and I listen to podcasts for the most part and you know can uh, you know, sometimes switch out a podcast for an audiobook sure and I thought man the temptation is right there I have it but I was like no I've already got too much shit I need to try to keep straight yeah I do not want to confuse myself right. and I absolutely will 
But I think now that we've finished reading, I'm probably going to go okay. back and listen to that. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about that book. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it would definitely make a nice companion piece to this mm-hmm. if you have an interest specifically in Marvel. I love the the scenes in this book where when Stanley is like at the timely offices, just sitting around playing a flute <laughs> and like spying on people. Yeah. He's so odd. Yep. Yeah. And he's such a like <clears throat> everything in this book makes it seem like. You know, from the moment that guy's feet hits the floor in the morning, every decision is based on money. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's kind of like the Gene Simmons of comics. Absolutely, he is, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, like, the, the Marvel history book will definitely confirm that. Right. You know, and like I said, like, the, the subtitle to that book should always have been, Stan Lee doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, luckily, though, I would say, uh, I mean, he he's there because obviously he is a big part of comic book history. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. But there's not a lot of focus on him. Right. And, yeah. And thank God for that. Right. I agree. It did like it did kind of say he. You know, one thing that a lot of artists even credit him as for revolutionizing is is the way that he he did just kind of come up with a very simple, loose version of a plot, and then the artist would draw the story untethered by, you know, Alan Moore-esque descriptions. Right. And then he would go back in and just add the dialogue, make, you know, adding dialogue that he thought looked like that panel right. would, would, would need. Like, like the, the, the character's expression would, would be indicating specific words and he would put those words in that, that mouth. Yeah. And like, it does work really well and, it does. I would say that there's definitely pros to that and pros to the Alan Moore. Sure. You know, oh, yeah. Heavily detailed panel descriptions. Right. Uh, you know. Especially since Alan Moore might be slightly better of a writer than Stan Lee. Ooh, Just a tad. Bit. Yeah. Uh, I will say, like, you know, uh, I've seen a lot of Jack Kirby original art online. And, like, you know, especially from, like, Fantastic Four heyday. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, yeah, so they probably, like, Stanley threw out, like, a sentence, and then Jack just went and drew a comic based on yeah, it. Yeah, right. Roughly, maybe. And so panels, like, he would write, like, Jack Kirby actually wrote the dialogue yeah. for, like, whatever he wanted the character saying, and Stan would just change whatever the fuck he felt like. Right. And a lot of it was... <clears throat> specifically in the Fantastic Four, like, you can find online, like, panels of, like, you know, Reed and Sue, like, talking or whatever, and, like, if you can make out the notes, it's like, you know, Sue does this, and, you know, is, like, you know, demanding something, and then, like, you see, like, what Stanley actually wrote, and it's Reed basically saying, Sue, you're just a dumb bitch, get the hell out of the way, <laughs> when that's clearly not what right. Kirby intended here. Yeah. Know? Or, like, when when he could not write around it, like, he would, like, have, like, an off-panel voice saying, you know, oh, Sue, you're so dumb, you lucked into this. You know, that kind of <laughs> stuff, you know. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That is terrible. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, that withstanding, I have read some books that Jack Kirby totally wrote and scripted himself, and sometimes... Oh, yeah, they're not great. Sometimes they're a little odd. Yeah. And like, they're just... They, it's a little, a little off, but... But when someone is that talented in one aspect, I you know you can't really fault them for exactly. their other, you know, lack of talents. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, but this is not all just about uh, superheroes. No, it's, it's about all comics. Yeah, comic strips and yeah. manga and everything. Although I mean, superheroes do play a big part of it because it's American comics. They're a yeah. big part of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do go on to say that if you know superheroes would have ever cease to exist um most likely so had the whole industry because the way all the distributors were relying on marvel and dc for sales because it, it's a they call it they keep referring to it as a pennies business where right. like you know pennies on the dollar for every comic sold is is what sustained the industry and yeah at least at least in you know the old days of like the New drug stores, stores and whatnot right. Uh, yeah, it uh, gets a little dark there towards the end. Oh, my gosh. It starts talking about uh, the, the current state of the direct market. Yeah, like how it's 
just falling apart and yep. becoming digital and well, not only just that, but pirates, pirates, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like how every other type of tangible media outlets are just closing up. Yep. Um, and then we would be kind of idiots to assume that comics aren't gonna follow suit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird because I mean, like the music industry, I would say probably got hit the hardest by yeah. the digital yeah. revolution of sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say comics are, are a close second on, on getting blindsided by it all. Right. Uh, and, and the fact that even now, like, they still really haven't figured out, like, the best way to, to get, you know, digital comics out there in the world, you know. Yeah, I haven't, honestly. It's like the easiest thing to do. Right. Like, you just go to the website and say, I want to buy a comic, and it downloads to you. Right. You know, but, but, I mean, Marvel and DC are still charging full cover price. Right. For a digital comic, even months after it's over. Why would I want to pay $4 for a digital copy of something that I can go to the store and at least get, like, a 10% discount? Sure. Yeah. Or, or like, you know, I want And you can flip through it first to make sure you actually want it. Exactly, yeah. right? So, do those digital comics have all the ads, though? No. So, I wonder if they're just making up for lost ad revenue. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because yeah. I'm sure, sure, like, like I know from firsthand, well, there's two factors that keep their books so cheap. The amount that they actually print, because, like, you know, we're working on some books, and if we print them up, they cost... Uh, almost three dollars per copy for us to print them. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there's price breaks if you, you know, have like thousands of copies as opposed to like two hundred copies. Right. And then there's also all the ad revenue. So I'm sure that makes up a huge portion of oh, how I'm sure yeah. of their business. And I remember, like, fifteen years ago, there was a trend, especially in Marvel books, where every other page was an ad. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was ridiculous. Yep. Like you would read a single page, turn it, and there was an ad. Another page, turn it, and then a double page spread. It ad. was horrible. Yeah, it was awful. And the ads were garish too. Oh, it, yeah. it wasn't even like they were fun and weird. Like, like when you read old seventies comics, I sometimes don't even notice that there's you know quote unquote too many ads right. because there's so much fun. Like there's just so weird. Like buy a submarine or a rifle or a yeah. monkey, and you and know that's they, that's so much more fun than like. Twix and Nissan ads. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, but they're basically magazine ads now. Yeah. Like the same kind that you would find in, like, Time or, you know, right. Good Housekeeping. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and occasionally something just really weird and, you know, perverted because uh, nerds will like this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nerds are sexually frustrated animals. Yeah. Uh,. But no, I mean, yeah, this this touches on, you know, uh, you know, every major era of comics and then like, you know, the the Wortham era, you know, the seduction of the innocents. Oh, yeah. Uh it's kinda I like as dark as it oops, sorry. As dark as it gets though, it it is kinda cool that it it kinda shows just how what a force comics are because they've there is more than one time where they just should have just ceased to exist because oh, yeah. of the what was happening, like in the fifties with Wortham and the Comics Code, which almost destroyed the industry, and then again like in the nineties when the bur- bubble burst and like fifty five percent I think of all comic shops went out of business because right. of all the sports card, you know, trading card, Marvel card, right, hollow cover over ordering all that shit. Everything that Maverick still has. Everything that we have in our back room. <laughs> and like and also even the How eight, did you guys not go out of business? I don't know. <laughs> I it was Pokemon probably. <laughs> Pokemon saved us. Um but even in the eighties it talked about, you know, after the turtles happened the you know, the black and white boom. Yeah, they yeah. assumed everything was gonna be the next big hit. Yeah. And um it's it's kinda like there's a little bit of that now with Image because so many people are invested in image number ones hoping for another Walking Dead. Right. Um, there's so many, like, you know, people buying like multiple copies of number ones and none of the rest of them. Right. And they're buying them to send a few off to get CGC graded and hoping that they'll have a $10,000 book. Right. You know? 
I mean, you know, it'd be cool if that happened, but it's not. No. It's just right. not. Yeah. yeah. Like, The Walking Dead was a one in a million chance. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like a perfect storm. Yeah. Uh, Except for it didn't have Mark Wahlberg in it. Real. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, good feel good. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> no, yeah, and then, uh, you know, uh, there's also it touches on, like, you know, the, the rise of underground comics. Yeah, and, all the Robert Crumb stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. great. I okay, love that. So, like, while I was reading this, like, it got to the Robert Crumb part, and I swear to God, like, I felt like I was having, like, PTSD flashbacks of watching the Crumb documentary. <laughs> Such a great documentary. It is. It really is. But like, like his brother oh, in that yeah. documentary made me so uncomfortable. Oh yes. And so like, there there's a short part where like they they focus on Robert Crumb and his brother a little bit, and like seriously, like all those feelings came back to me. Oh yeah. And and it's weird because like while watching that documentary, like. I loved his brother's artwork. Oh, yeah. Like, it was that weird shit where, like, everything was, like, twisty. Yeah, and right. those lines. Like, like I've occasionally, like, drawn stuff to try to emulate that. Uh, but, like, the one thing I don't have is fucking crazy. Yeah. So, You're trying, though. I'm trying, yeah. definitely. Like, like I'm <laughs> pushing that limit. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting there. <laughs> You'll be sleeping on a bed of nails pretty soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which I think Charles does in the movie. Yes, yeah, I believe so. But yeah, I loved all the stuff with undergrounds and like and like again, all of that just kind of was all about you know just the money and uh, yeah. and all the weirdness behind. Like this this book shows all of the like behind the scenes stuff of every era. Oh yeah, like it's immaculately researched. Yeah, unless he just makes all this shit up. It's possible. Yeah, he's a writer. He's yeah. a comic book writer. Right, yeah. You're right. Slapstick. Right. This can't be real. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I started to read this. My friend Neil loaned me the, f- I think the whole thing, uh, before. Maybe it was even the trade. And I read the first like chunk of it, and I just never, I never like. I think it was just so much that I was like, oh, that's too much to take in. Right. And I just never um, continued with it. But I'm really glad you picked it because. It gave me like a deadline and like, right. Cause I realized I just, I had it so long that I, and I hadn't read it. I just gave it back to Neil and I was like, oh, I'm, maybe I'm never going to read this, but I'm glad I did because, um, it was really, really good, really informative. And, yeah, um, my, uh, my friend Bruce actually, this is his copy. Uh, he gave this to me at, uh, Gem City. Okay. And, uh, said, you, you are interested in this, right? Like, I don't. Bruce has a habit of sometimes making up conversations <laughs> that we never actually have. And so uh, I, I think that's what happened here. Huh. Uh, but, like, I have wanted to read this, so I was like, yeah. Yeah, and, sure. And I think it was one of those things where I was like, well, if I don't pick it for the show, I probably won't Would get never read it. Yeah. yeah, I have a few books like that myself. Yeah. And it's funny. Like, the, uh, the art is so funny. And, and a lot of times, you know... Um, Fred Van Lentz writes something, and then Ryan, like what he chooses to draw, I'm guessing he he's the one that chooses it. Um, it's kind of like a metaphorical, cartoon, version of of what Fred is talking about. Yeah, like it'll be like when he talks about, you know, um, original artwork from Marvel just being given away to executives that they were doing deals with, right. and it just shows like the kids like making like paper boats out of them and sail them away. I'm like, it doesn't mention that in any of the writing, right. but it just shows these funny little things. I'm like very inventive and like just weird and funny stuff. You know, I saw that and I was like, I would not be surprised if that actually did. Oh, that. sure. Right. Yeah. Or like, like the, some of the stories that I've heard, like what they did with some of the original art. Like, it absolutely. would not surprise oh, me. It's, yeah, yeah. It's sad. And I love like, uh, I love this. There's this page here where it shows how the nineties, Instead of, like, when Watchmen was was yeah. successful, instead of, like, you know, being inspired by the... Just, Depth and yeah, sophistication. Yeah, and just, yeah. like, how it's so unique and... Right. Like, it showed, like, all the 90s characters of, like, where they just grasped the violence and the sex that was in Watchmen, and we're like, oh, that's right. that's why this is good. Yep. Yeah. And I, lo- I would totally buy Crotch, crotch Shot. shot. <laughs> if that ever is a thing, I will buy it. He only shoots crotches. 
It's like this guy with like crow makeup and a pierced ear and like a Jonah Hex hat and like a Ghost Rider leather jacket <laughs> and Lobo boots and <laughs> Rob Liefeld pouches all over him. We should both draw crush shots. <laughs> Yeah, we should. <laughs> I'll wait for our vlogs. <coughs> uh, I will say, because you're kind of touching on it right now, the the uh, a good, good chunk of it is is devoted to to Alan Moore's contributions to to comics. Yeah, uh, uh, mostly with Watchmen, uh, but but also with Miracle Man and Marvel Man, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there is nothing in this book that delighted me more. <laughs> Then the drawing of Alan Moore as a little schoolboy. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was amazing. He's got his full beard. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, the art is hilarious. Like he's he's really good. Oh yeah. Did he he also did, did is it the same team that did Action Philosophers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's really good. Uh yeah, so what a good book this yeah, is. Yeah, oh yeah. And it, it really is like something that like belongs on your shelf because it's something that you would probably want to revisit from time to time and read in smaller chunks. Yeah. I mean, it, it is definitely like so much information and so many names and publishers, titles and yeah. like, you know, it's it's a valuable like sort of history, but it, at the same time it's it's not yeah, it's not just like a leisurely read where, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there's a lot to remember and a lot to take yeah. in. I mean, the art def definitely helps make it yeah. a little lighter. Yeah. But, but, you know, yeah, there is definitely a lot of information, uh, passed along. And I will say this also while reading it, like, I got to a point where, like, I was just like, you know, this is all about, you know, like superheroes and like the EC era and then post war zone and all that. And it was like this is the comic book history of comics, and yet they're, they're like not touching on like European comics at all. And then like literally two pages later, <laughs> yeah, like it was like in France, yeah, it was like oh okay, yeah. So it's like every time like I almost had right. like like a not a complaint but just like a concern, yeah. Like like two pages later, like. There was like a new theme chapter that like totally hit on, on what it. I wanted here. Yeah. I mean, I would say a good ninety percent of it is American comics right. in here, but yeah, they talk about manga, the origins of manga. They talk about oh, I loved that uh, the, yeah, the that entire really... chapter about uh, Osama Tezaku. That was really good. Uh, the guy did Astro Boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or where was it? it was called like Air Boy or something. Uh, it was called something different. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Adam Adam Boy something like that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and it, and it talks about Tin Tin and um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Heavy metal. There's a good oh, chapter yeah. on heavy metal. And that that uh, is weird that heavy metal didn't last as long overseas as it did here. Yeah, That's well, kind of strange. Metal hurling. Yeah. yeah. Surprising. I know they even tried to bring back metal hurling like not too long ago. But it didn't work. I guess not. I think there was even a metal hurling TV show on huh. Sci-Fi. Wow. Uh, but again, clearly didn't uh, didn't last too long. I love the stuff like they talk about Lichtenstein and um, oh yeah, the Adam West Batman series yeah, and yeah. Warhol, like all that stuff was really interesting too. Um, I got a little worried when when Lichtenstein first showed up. Yeah, because I I have strong opinions about Lichtenstein. Yeah, I mean I, I like I like the idea. I actually have always loved the idea of. Of taking one thing and kind of making it into something else, like right. that's that's why I love like samples and music, sure. and, you know, stuff like that. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think with with him it's a little different because he's not giving any credit to right. the original exactly. artist. Exactly. And who would do that? Right. That is <laughs> so crazy. Um, but I I did love um um <laughs> the stuff with uh. Adam West, though, where it, where it showed, you know, how, you know, Andy Warhol and, and all those guys, they brought him over, and Fellini, yeah. and, and, like, they, they, they loved, like, what Stanley was doing in, like, the 60s Batman show and all this stuff. And, and I have always wondered why there are some Spider-Man comics that say a pop art production on oh, the yeah, cover. Yeah. I've always, like, I always thought that was neat looking, and I was like, 
and I've never really sat and thought about it, but I know I've been put, I, I'll occasionally like put Silver Age books on the wall and I'll see a pop art production on a cover of a Spider-Man book and I'm always like, what the hell does that mean? Right. And then like it is because again, the money thing, because Stanley, um, saw that, you know, college crowds were really into like Andy Warhol and all this pop art. Right. And like kind of, like they said, I think they said the cultural elite was like condescendingly like, you know, enjoying Batman right. TV show because they could like laugh at it and slum a little bit with the yeah. the nerds. Yeah. And uh and he, he put that on the covers to make them think like, Oh yeah, I can buy this comic. It's not a comic book, it's a pop art production. Right. Like he I mean he was just kinda like uh, you know, ever the salesman. Yeah. yeah. I do feel like maybe a little bit like that not necessarily that attitude, but just sort of the like rebranding of comics as pop art is something maybe that's a little lacking in modern day comics. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I mean not not again, not to the point where it's like really pretentious and like, oh look at this lowly form of art. Right. You know, especially like because it, it does touch on, you know, like in France and in Japan, how comics are kind of revered. Oh yeah, in, in those cultures, like and, by all ages groups and all like right income groups exactly. And, and here, I mean, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy two just came out and made like a hundred million dollars in like two days. Right, and yet comics are still yeah. considered a niche just, market. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, so it's like. For whatever reason, like comic books themselves are, are just still continuously maligned, no matter what happens. Like, like it's always going to be thought of as just like for for imbeciles. So hey, apologies. Uh, my computer just fucking died. <laughs> so uh, we got cut off in the the middle of uh, what we were talking about. Uh, luckily not too much was lost. Right. But, uh, in the 15, 20 minutes or so that I've been trying to figure out solutions, uh, before finally giving up and getting out my laptop to record on, uh, I kind of lost the thread of where we were. Yeah. So. Comics are good. (laughs) Yeah. That's pretty much it. We found our medium because they're for imbeciles. (laughs) <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. I think that's where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, it sucks because I think we were pretty close to wrapping up that segment anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, the comic book history of comics is uh, good. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's very informative and entertaining. Yes, which is so. a yeah. nice pairing. And, and yeah, like like I said earlier, it, it uh, jumps around enough and gives you enough about like you know other aspects of comics that you, maybe you don't think of all the oh, time. Oh yeah, all right you for know, sure. That, that uh, definitely keeps it uh, uh, fast paced. And does not bog you down with like so much information that you feel like you're reading. The right. Yeah. yeah. Like it does have an amazing amount of information, but it's absolutely it's yeah. They do a great job of not making you feel like as long as you read it in small spurts. Because like yeah, it, 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 it took me. It, it, I had to have some breathers to like process some oh, of yeah, some yeah. of the. Yeah. Um. Also, one thing that I will sort of praise for it, because you and I, we, we love comic books. I like a comic or two. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in this that we knew. Sure, yeah. Uh, particularly, like, uh, involving, you know, like, some of the, the icons of, of uh, you know, comic history, like oh, yeah. Jack Kirby and Stanley and that, uh, that... They are in this book, but they're not dominating this book. Right. And the stuff that we know, like, is touched on, but, like, you know, it's enhanced with new information. Yeah. And so for for guys like us who who are, I would say, relatively well-steeped in comic Ooh, book history. Yeah, we know a little nerdy right. things. Yeah. Like, like, it doesn't make it boring for us, and I think... For anyone who doesn't know anything about comic history, 
like it's interesting enough that they m- want to find out more. Yeah, and, yeah, I think and, so too. Yeah, and like I said earlier, that that uh, Sean Howe book, the uh, Marvel: The Untold Story, oh, yeah. is a great supplement to this if you specifically just want to know about Marvel, right? Because I'm sure they, I'm sure they talk about. All the other things oh, yeah. that were going on in exactly. that era, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, especially, like, Golden Age stuff. You know, right. You touch on, like, just sort of everything that was happening. Right. Uh, but but it is definitely, like, once you get through, basically, the Marvel Age of comics, you know, I mean, it is so focused on that, and, and you learn so much stuff, and you will <laughs> get your heart broken. Yeah, right? Just like Jack Kirby warned us all. Comics will break your heart. Comics will break your heart. Yeah. Yep. And so we'll podcast in occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a, another break. Sure. Although this time I won't be swearing at a machine. No. It'll just be swearing at me. Exactly. Like usual. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back. Yeah. <laughs> trash hello hey buddy hey so um yeah we read the comic book history of comics we talked about it yeah we did life is complete yeah yeah um yeah i uh because there was so much happening in the book i actually really did not read anything else yeah oh yeah yeah, this i finished this in my car after I got off work tonight before I came over because <laughs> my plan was to read the last like little chapter before right. work today and I got called in two hours early so I was like frantically reading it and then I drove to work and I still had like six pages left right so I I got it in my car and read them and then I drove over here yeah. <laughs> I uh 
I read I read this book over the course of like a week and a half of lunch breaks. Nice. And oh, that then, seems perfect. Uh, occasionally, like you know, here at home, I, I did read them, uh, but even still, I had about. 15 pages left when I got home. Wow. So I read those uh, when I got home tonight around 6 <laughs> and then passed out. Yeah, there's a lot to take in in this. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. But, yeah, I didn't want to read anything else. I didn't want to listen to anything else uh, uh, informational or historical. Uh, but uh, I did read one other thing. Oh, so oh. Youngblood number one? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I read Secret Empire number zero. Oh, yeah. The free comic book day offering from Marvel Comics. Mm-hmm. Changed your life? Oh, wow. It absolutely did. Because <laughs> uh, I thought I liked Nick Spencer, but mm-hmm. maybe I don't. Maybe he is a Nazi tool of the government. <laughs> Aren't we all? That's true. No. It's, uh, it is one of the worst comics I've ever read, though. Mm. It's definitely one of the worst drawn comics I've ever seen. Uh, and so I felt dumber having read that. Uh, and, and I actually, I do like Nick Spencer. Mm-hmm. I, I, he, the Fix is easily one of the best comics currently being published. Yeah. Uh, which he never talks about because he's too busy arguing with people on Twitter. <laughs> Or turning Captain America into a Nazi. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got to do that every once in a while. Well, sure. Uh, but no, I, I do actually really like his work. But man, that was terrible. Uh, but basically, this is all just the long way of me saying Free Comic Book Day was this past weekend. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we have away free comics yeah, at you the did. place I worked at. Yeah. So, yeah, our, our little joke is that... Uh, you know, every time uh, between episodes, we we wind up doing a convention of some sort. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And uh, this kind of was that. It counts, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you were drawing for people. I was. Uh, you were both uh, there at Mavericks Cards and Comics in Kettering, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and your position as as a uh, manager of a comic store, and mm-hmm. me as. Uh, uh, one of, uh, your special guests. Yeah. You, you were maybe the featured artist. Maybe, <laughs> I'll say. So it's, since you're the one we knew was going to be there. <laughs> I was the one that was allowed inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it was, it was really fun. It was actually like the busiest free comic book day I think we've ever had. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I did last year's and that was crazy too, but like I felt like, like, I don't know. I was a little off, especially first thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but like, like I, I felt a little overwhelmed at times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now there was a, yeah, a, sh- a shit stream of people. <laughs> <laughs> shit storm. Does yeah. that sound better? Uh, shit stream sounds more derogatory. I, the people were fine. There was just tons of them. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and we, yeah, I know sales wise, we were definitely above last year by, by a, a portion. And that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I mean, you know, it's free comic book day. People could easily just come in and just take advantage of that and leave. Right. And but, some people do. No, no, and that's course. fine. Yeah. It, it's like a whole experience where they run store to store and they make a day of it. But right. it is cool when they also buy something. Right. It's great. Cause, cause the, Comics aren't free to you, right? Yeah, a lot of people retailer. don't. Yeah, they, a lot. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I mean, they, they're not expensive, and it's just like it's basically we're paying for advertisement. Right. I mean, you know, which most places I apparently do <laughs> in the world. Um, we just don't. We don't advertise a lot because we've just been around for like three decades right. or more, three and a half decades. It's still, like, so, I mean, you still get people that don't know we're yeah. dating forever oh, and yeah. have no idea that you're. Yep, here. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it was cool though. I mean, yeah, it was lots of people, lots of familiar faces, but a lot of people we had never seen. So that was cool. And probably never will again. Maybe not. Yeah. But who knows? Yeah. But no, it's good when, when people do buy stuff. Cause he had a lot of sales going on too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, good discounts on, on comics and toys and whatnot. Uh, mm-hmm. I even bought a toy. Yeah, you did. Wow. Well, yeah. You bought a Batman. I did. I bought a Darwin Cook Batman. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. And uh, they had a uh, 
uh, a Bill Finger, Jerry Robinson Batman too yeah. that uh, I thought about buying. I think we sold that one too. You did. Yeah. Our friend Demario. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we give Demario the finger. <laughs> Uh, apparently, there is a documentary on uh, Hulu right now about uh, Bill Finger. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'd so, like to see that. Yeah. I don't have a Hulu account, but uh, you know, figure out a way to watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. There's fire sticks out there. Sure. Or, or whatever. Yeah. Yar. <laughs> uh, say no more. Wink, wink. Walk the plank. I get it. Sugar me timber. <laughs> Long John Silvers. Basically, I'm saying I'm really excited about the new Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, 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 and uh, and and fish fillets with vinegar on them. Yes, mm-hmm. actually, both of those things sound terrible. Yeah, yeah. I do not like fish. I do not like vinegar. Oh, really? Yeah. I like vinegar. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I like balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, that is good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, like, like last year, I was there, uh, giving away free sketches and, uh, drawing, uh, sketches for people if they didn't like any of the ones that I had already done. Right. Uh, yeah. uh so last year, uh, I drew something like 30 sketches before, uh, Free Comic Day. Right, like on printer paper? Uh, no, it was on, uh, Bristol board. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was, uh, like half size of a 9x12, so. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever. Four and a half by six or whatever. Something yeah, like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I did 30 of those uh, before the show. They all went within the first hour. And then, like, during the show, I drew, like, another 30, uh, for people just who came up and wanted to draw. Uh, which was crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so this year, I planned in advance. Way in advance. Way in advance. Yeah. And I decided that, uh, cause the, the ones I did last year also had some gray tone and some color in them. Uh, I decided that, uh, I want, I want as many people as possible to get, you know, a free sketch if they wanted mm-hmm. one. Uh, and so I decided to do trading card, artist trading card sized, uh, sketches and only in black and white. Right. And I do. I drew 120 yeah. before the show. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of drawings. It is. And it was uh, cool to see them all laid out. It was. Yeah. It was a little overwhelming, actually. Mm-hmm. Once, once I looked at the picture of it, you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. And uh, and they all barely just fit. Yeah. Barely. Right. Yeah. Uh. Uh. But uh, you know, they went. Oh yeah, the, like pretty quickly, like like I was condensing them down to just uh, one side of the counter. Uh, but that said, even by because I was there for six hours, uh, even by like into the last hour, I still had maybe like four left. Mm-hmm. And so, so some of them went slowly, and, right. and I learned some lessons. Uh, one, <laughs> you uh, love drawing babies and zebras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay, so I did. I was also drawing custom sketches yeah. for people or, or requests. I did about, I would say, thirty-two or so, roughly. Uh, and yeah, some people wanted uh, some odd things. Yeah, well, they wanted a caricature artist, right? And I'm yeah. not that, right? And I tried to oblige them as much as possible, but after like my third one, especially yeah. after I had to draw a baby, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not. Doing At least they had a life model. Yeah, but still, I'm not, I'm not doing that ever again. Oh, that was funny. And I did have to draw a cat and a zebra. <laughs> and at least they brought their zebra with them. Well, yeah, yeah, I needed the reference. Right. Uh, <clears throat> that wasn't fun, but I'm not as opposed to that as I was drawing people. Right. Because you can just get away with drawing like a generic cat yeah. or a zebra. Right. Uh, but you know when. You have to draw a 13-year-old girl who really has no standout features. Like, and I'm not good at likenesses anyway. Right. And I'm not a caricature artist. Right. 
Yeah, like, there's not, not much to work with. Like, exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. you're like you're just hoping like she would have had like, you know, like an eye patch or like right, yeah. or like a mohawk or, or something. Something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like like any of the goth girls who came by, if they wanted themselves right, right. at least that's something. Because they're a character. Exactly. Like they're, yeah. they're in like a costume or whatever. Right, and and uh, yeah, and, and then a baby. <laughs> I know. I looked up and I saw you drawing the baby. It was <laughs> it was maybe the highlight of my day. <laughs> Because I was, ah. I could just feel what you were feeling, probably, <laughs> and it was so funny. <laughs> I was like, "There's a baby sitting on the counter, and he's, ah. oh fuck, he's drawing that baby." <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, other lessons learned. Apparently, uh, everybody loves Kiss, but nobody loves Kiss enough to take free sketches of them. <laughs> At least not. The drummer, though, or the guitar player. Uh, yeah, Ace or, or Peter. Yeah. Uh, even Paul took a while to, to, to move. Wow. Yeah. Well, Gene would be my first choice, too. Yeah, yeah. But even then, he's still, he stuck around. He hung out a while. Quite a while, while. yeah. Uh, and uh, also, uh, apparently, uh, G.I. Joe, uh, not that popular amongst anybody. Snake Eyes hung out a while. Yeah, yeah, and and the person who did take him thought it was a Power Ranger. <laughs> did you clue him in? Nope. nope. You're like, yep, Black Ranger. Yep. Have a good day, sir. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy Power Ranger. Um, and then... Uh, Man, that must have pissed Snake Eyes off. I bet he's silently judging that guy right now. Guess who else is silently <laughs> judging right now? Uh... <laughs> Uh, and also, um, I will never, ever, ever, ever draw any character from the movie Nightbreed ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you drew, what's the guy's name with the, like, uh, malformed his, forehead? His name is Kinski. And, yeah, he's got a head shaped sort of like a crescent moon. Yeah. Uh, my, my friend Bruce, who, who let us borrow, uh, his copy of the comic book history of comics, asked if I would draw a Nightbreed character. And I said, yeah, all right. Maybe you just drew the wrong one. Uh, maybe, but that's the one that always stood out to me. Oh, yeah. And also the easiest to draw. Right. Because. Uh, Isn't there like a guy in a suit with like a scarecrow mask? Uh, that's, uh, David Cronenberg. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a cool one. He's like the villain of the movie. Right. I figured. That was a little too. I should draw like one of the monsters. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, so I drew the the guy with the yeah. crescent moon. And it, uh, end of the day, nobody took him. He's the last one. It's a free fucking sketch. Yeah. Nobody took him. <laughs> also had one guy put a sketch back, and I yelled at him. <laughs> I heard you tell him you were like, "Well, I'm offended now," and he's like, oh, "Okay," and he yeah. took it. Uh-huh. What was it? Iron yeah. Fist. Iron Fist. And he was like, "Oh, Iron Fist," and he took it. And then, like, apparently, after he made the circle, he set it back down. Yeah, I was like, "What?" <laughs> and so I called him out on it. That's funny. <laughs> Offensive. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, like by by the the end of the day, though, my arm was killing me. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of drawing. Yeah. A lot of drawing. But, uh, and then I, I was also starving, because I brought a snack with me, but had zero opportunity to eat anything. Yeah, that was... It was a steady stream. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even when I had downtimes, like, like for a minute I could rest, and then, like, there was already somebody up there. Next time, next time you need soup and one of those beer hats... That way you can just drink it all day long. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> or uh, our friend Doogie had uh, one of those uh, water oh, backpack yeah. sacks, right. the camel good. pumps or whatever they are. <laughs> yeah. I'd fill that up with some chowder. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just hope it doesn't leak like on your, oh, yeah, your yeah. dress up shirt. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. Or or on you know all the toys. Oh uh, yeah, you guys have back there. Yeah, you were sandwiches in between our like toy cases. Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a tight fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it was good times. It was good times. Yeah, and, I'm, and glad, I'm glad you were there. Happened, but I don't know if we want to talk about that. <laughs> nah, <or not>. nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, basically, uh, 
unbeknownst to me until the last minute, uh, there was another artist that showed up. Um, nice enough fella, but I'm sure none of us knew that he was going to be there until like the day before Free Comic Book Day. Yeah. Apparently, Jack, the owner of Mavericks, had invited him, uh, not told anyone about him, and not made sure that there was actually space for him, which there there literally was not. Right. I mean, there was barely room for you. Exactly. Uh, and and you know. He uh, he ended up with a fold-up table on the sidewalk because weather permitted. Um, it was supposed to be rainy, but it yeah, ended up it being nice. So, uh, so at least at least that had yeah. happened. Well, yeah. at least he brought his own table and chair. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that. I guess. Whatever. Yeah. It, it worked out. It it could have been much worse. It, yeah, definitely. Could yeah. Have been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was exhausted by the end of it. But, yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you were there. Yeah, if, if, uh, if I'm invited back next year, uh, certainly not. Oh. We found our new artist. Oh, okay. Uh, we're That's moving fair. him inside. That's fair. Well, but if you want to show up with your card table and sure. your cigarettes, okay. all right, all right, all right. yeah. <laughs> my my box of Crayola and yeah. Sharpies. Sure, yeah. Right. Come on by. I just uh, <sighs> can you help me figure out some good artists to rip off? Oh, sure. That I can take total credit for their work. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Sweet. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's plenty. All right. Yeah. Start with Chap Yep. Okay. And move right. up from there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good times. I'm I'm glad Free Comic Book Day is over. Yeah. Uh, I basically spent the entire day today restocking all the walls, restocking all of the trade paperbacks from our our reservoir of overflow and reordering a ton of trade paperbacks. Like, like we were almost out of, you know, like Watchmen and Sandman, and yeah. some, of, some of the perennial sellers. I wanted to buy a trade, but I couldn't really find any that like really spoke to me oh, yeah. while, while I was there. Hmm. Uh, I almost bought the uh, Jack Kirby Spirit World thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a $40 book. Yeah. And it's not that thick. And even with, uh, like, I think it's you guys twenty four bucks. Forty percent off. Yeah. Like it was still just still too much. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Comics are expensive. They can be. We should pirate them. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't buy a single sale item myself either, right. which is weird. I usually buy some trades or something, but whatevs. Did you pick up any of the free comics for yourself? I did. I picked up uh there was a guide to Leslie one called like tr- prisoner or hostage. Hostage, yeah. yeah. I read that one. I, I thought it was just okay. I don't know if I've ever read anything by him, and okay. um, it wasn't it wasn't as cool as I was hoping it would be. Like I was disappointed. Um, but I really liked the Fanographics cartoonist one. Oh yeah. It had like seven short stories um, by s- some people I'd never heard of, and I really liked. Th- them and then it also had some of my favorites and I really liked them as well. Like, yeah, cool. like I didn't even realize Ed Pisker has a new autobiographical graphic novel coming out. Really? But there was a, a few page excerpt of it in there. Okay. It's about how he got into comics. Okay. I know he's working on a ton of stuff because I guess he's also doing some sort of superhero y sci fi type of book. Oh, it? really? Yeah, well, unless. All that stuff is part of. Oh, it might be. You know, the autobios. Because it's because yeah, it showed like clips of him as a kid, like reading stuff, and right. so it might be from that. Right. I think it's called. I want to say it's called Mudslide, but that might not be right. Yeah, Mudfish. Mudfish. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I've seen him post some of that stuff online too. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, that was cool. Does that mean hip hop uh, is done, or I don't is know. he just taking a break? I think he, I know that he's like reformatted it. He's only doing graphic novels now instead of single issues. So, I don't know. Well, the the single issues came well. It started as a web comic, yeah, which he then put out as graphic novels, and then he put out single issues of that of graphic, the graphic novel. Yeah. yeah, so basically he did it backwards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally true. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think he was only doing the first graphic novel last single issue. Oh, okay. Maybe. Something like that. Hey. Eh. Eh. 
Hopefully he continues that. Because that's one of those things, too. He could probably do it. Well, not forever, really, because eventually he'll catch up catch to it right now. But, but uh, uh, he's, he's great. Oh, yeah. Uh, anything else? Um, that's all. I, I read the new Youngblood number one that came out this week. It oh, was yeah. it was weird and fun. That's good. Um, it was unlike any other Youngblood I've ever read, and it had a lot of tweeting and uh, hashtagging and stuff like that. And, huh. then, and then there was a like so four... it stated itself <laughs> yeah. pretty horribly already, right? Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to all the other Youngblood titles, <laughs> right? And then there was a like a three or four page backup story that. A Liefeld wrote Andrew, so I was all tingly when I read that. <laughs> so I have no interest in that, but I am getting the blank cover. Oh, cool. Which I guess is coming out this week. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, it's weird that it, they released it a week after I, the actual you comic know, came out. A lot of companies are doing that. Like Titan, the publisher of the uh, Doctor Who books, yeah. and then IDW does it a lot too, where cover A's will come out one week and I, like I don't think it's on purpose I think they just can't quite get their shit together right. because cover B's will come out the next week and then we're confused we're like wait a minute did we get short half of our Doctor Who's right. and then like we do files and then we're like oh, I can't this. imagine the, the mental gymnastics that you guys have to do to keep up with how many Doctor Who's come oh out anyway oh my god <laughs> it's insane and they usually put them all out the same week so right. and like some people only want certain ones and right. there's like four covers to every one we're like and then like you know when we do the files we double check each other and it's so i'll go back and check a file and i'm like that doctor who's not the same one that's sitting up there so i'll put that one in there because he forgot it and then i put it in there and i realized they're both the same number of different covers and i, I fucking hate <laughs> doctor who comics they're the worst <laughs> but but yeah sometimes um, titan and idw will put out cover a's one week and cover b the next week and it's it's really annoying like it makes me not like variant covers. Like if I was ever going to publish a comic, the last thing I would do would have some, be have somebody to do a variant cover for. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. stupid. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> seriously, it's one of the worst trends in comics. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that's all I've read though. Young Blood. Yeah. Like I said, I read uh, Secret Empire and it was terrible. And, uh, but but not because Captain America is a Nazi or anything like that. It was just terrible. Just poorly it's terrible. done. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> Because cause it's the same bullshit of every other mega corporate comic crossover that you've read any other time. Right. Like, this is it. This is the end of the world. This is life-affirming, changing shit right here. Yeah. This right. is the biggest thing you've ever read. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And then next month, there's a new one. Sure. Yeah. It's dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like I stopped reading crossovers a long time ago. And, uh, uh like, just reading that was just like oh yeah this this is why it solid, solidified your yeah, yeah. your yeah like even when i do buy marvel and dc books regularly like usually if they're involved in a crossover like i'll stop buying that particular book right during that crossover yeah might as well yeah 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 i typically don't like those either I, the first time i remember being aware of that i think was the uh because I think when Secret Wars came out, I, I liked, you know, I like read some of those crossovers sure. when I was a kid. But whatever that, I think it was Executioner's song, the ones that were bagged with a card in the 90s. And uh, I remember Peter David kind of mentioning, kind of poking fun at the fact that he had to, like, kind of steer his story in a certain direction because it was crossover time. And right. just how it was kind of annoying. Like, because I used to read his his. But I digress column, and yeah. I think he talked about it in there, and I was like, oh, yeah, that would be annoying for a writer. Like, yeah. you're building something, all of a sudden, you, you find out. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, like, just ruins the pacing of everything. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I know back during, like, Civil War, when, when that was first coming out, you know, like, I was reading Daredevil at the time, and it was, like, Daredevil is like one of the only books that was not involved in the Civil War crossover. Mm -hmm. And it was like fantastic. Like, I can at least still keep reading that. Yeah. And, you know, like, because I was also reading other comics at the time, and like, you know, I'd be in the middle of a storyline. Like, I think even X Factor, Peter David was yeah, involved. Sure. And like, suddenly, like, you're in the middle of a storyline, and then, you know, the next issue is like everything ground to a halt because. There had to be a crossover. Right. You know? It's annoying. Yeah. Like, I love the idea of 
you know, if they plan the crossover of just, you know, like two titles or maybe, sure. maybe three, like, you know, that's that cool. Fun, it yeah. could be really well done. But yeah, the fact that they like, like, like Howard the Duck and, uh, Squirrel Girl. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was good. But yeah, when it's just it seems just so arbitrary and pro- it, it just reminds me of what a commodity, um, comics can be yeah. as opposed to artwork. Yep. That's why I will never read another Marvel comic ever again. All right. So it's time to pick my book for next week. Okay. I'd like to pick the Marvel comic Star-Lord by Chip Zdarsky. Okay. And somebody else. All right. Chris Anka. Chris Anka. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming you're talking about the newest The one. new one, yeah. Grounded, I think it's called. I yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah. kind of want to veto. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Why is that? I hate Chris Anka. Oh, wow, really? Like, a lot. <laughs> I think he's terrible. Oh. And I do not want to read a comic that he drew. Ooh, especially six issues of it. Yeah. Okay, if you want to veto it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I won't be upset if you veto no, it. Like, like, I just... Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy or whatever, but, like... Everybody is just slobbering all over his dick as, like, he's the greatest comic illustrator to ever happen to comics. And I think he's awful. <laughs> I think he is fucking terrible. No. Oh, okay. And again, he may be a great guy. Right. I don't want to read his art. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay if you want to veto. I've, I've got more books in my brain that I need to read. I'm going to veto. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Veto it. All right. Well, then let's not read no Marvel comics. <laughs> I heard just a minute ago somebody say they were terrible. <laughs> well, let's read. Let's read Shade the Changing Girl. Okay. Is that right? That I'm uh, down with. Yeah. And I own those. Sweet. That's so even easier. We, we can. Uh, For six, I guess. There's seven of them out, but I think six is where the trade is going to cut off. Okay. So yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cool. down. Awesome. Shade the Changing Girl. All right. Well, I'm going to read Star-Lord anyway. That's fine. I'll, can, I'll, I'll let you know how you, good it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I like Chip Zdarsky, but, you know, yeah. yeah, I just, no interest. <laughs> cool. It's all it's all good, man. <laughs> oh, I did uh, find out, uh, speaking of Chip Zdarsky, uh, confirmation that uh, Captara is being worked on. Oh, cool. So so it will come back. It's nice. Just, uh, this, with Kagan McLeod? With Kagan McLeod. Sweet. It's just uh, gonna take a little while. Yeah. So some things are worth the wait. Exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. So, sorry, Chris Anka. <laughs> well, I didn't even know his. Na- I've never until yeah. you mentioned it. I've never heard his name out loud. Yeah. So, um, but I will read it and I will let you know right. what I think of the art and the story. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Shade the changing girl. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, now that we've ended on me just <laughs> ripping a man in half. <laughs> uh, man, you're, you're totally Qui Gon Jin, I guess. So let's call it a night. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.